welcome to Extreme Tile. If you take Limport's Extreme One Chunk Iron Man concept and make it even more restricted, then what you end up with is an Extreme Tile account. Instead of completing all of the content within each individual map chunk, we take this one step further. We must complete all of the content on each individual tile that we unlock before rolling a new tile, which as it turns out, the traditional chunk rolling tile method causes issues with this game mode. So the one major difference is that we have to adapt to a new tile rolling system, but more on that in a sec. So this extreme tile concept was actually something that I thought of a couple of years ago, and that is when I actually made the first episode of it. Due to a pretty surprising reaction from my community, I actually decided to put this project on the side and continue my main channel series, that being the UAM Loki progress series. However, as of last week, I have now laid that series to rest, which means that I am now once again a free agent. And I gotta tell you, the time that I spent making episode 1 of this series was without a doubt the most fun I have ever had playing RuneScape. So it is with great pleasure that I now present to you episode 2 of Extreme Tile. Wait. What? We're back on me? Thought we were gonna play the video. Oh right, I forgot something. This video will make a lot more sense if you go back and watch the first video, so I will give you a sec to do that now. Alright, you watched it? Okay, you don't like have to watch it, but if you don't watch it, then don't complain about not understanding what's going on here. quick refresher from episode 1. After starting on our spawn tile, we worked our way south to this man's house where we unlocked our first challenge, the man drop table. After spending about 6 hours punching the man to death, we managed to complete every item on his drop table, allowing us to continue rolling more tiles, which is where we left off at the end of the last episode. Speaking of rolling tiles, sorry I gotta cut in one more time here, the traditional way that one chunk iron men will roll map chunks is pretty simple. Any map chunk adjacent to their current unlocked map chunks are eligible to be rolled. For one chunk accounts, this works perfectly fine up until you get to a large enough sample size. What actually happens is that every chunk account becomes identical, and that is really bad. Let me explain. I actually went ahead and learned to code Python just so I could have a visual representation for this for you guys. So we're just running our code here, give it a sec to complete, and here we go. What you are looking at here is the tile unlocking sequence of 100 different simulated extreme tile accounts. The code compiles all 100 simulations into this one chart, and then it plots out the average number of times that each tile was unlocked throughout all 100 simulations simulations. The darker the green is, the higher it is the likelihood that you will be unlocking that tile. Now, if we go ahead and superimpose this on the Lumbridge map chunk on our chunk picker map, try and say that a hundred times fast, what you end up seeing is that over 99% of people will end up having the exact same journey. So what does this mean? Well, because anyone playing this game mode will have the exact same journey, there is effectively zero versatility, zero random randomness, the path you will end up taking is ultimately going to be predetermined, and it leaves no room at all for exploration and adventure, which is kind of the entire point of this game. Yeah, yeah, Loki, whatever. This is just a cop-out. You know that it's predetermined that you're gonna have to get 99 defense at the combat tutor, and you just don't want to do that. So you're going off on this weird explanation, trying to justify some random decision that you made years ago, and you said that you learned Python. You had ChatGPT do that for you. I know you didn't learn. Python. <laughs> Okay, yes, the Python thing is true. Chat GPT OP. But the rest of what you're saying is just some kind of weird attachment that you have to the way that things were in previous iterations. It makes sense. I mean, the success of one chunk accounts isn't just a fluke. It comes from the underlying structure and foundation that the game mode operates on. And deviating from these rules essentially just throws out the social consensus that determines where the value of the game mode even comes from. But you have to understand that this is different. What I'm doing here is different. If I were to use the same chunk rolling system for rolling tiles on extreme tile, this is what would happen. This simulation is essentially just a standard distribution, which means that you can apply it at any magnitude and it'll still remain true. And this is why it's true. 
but there is a problem with the chunk rolling system because like I said, ultimately every one chunk account would become identical. The reason that this hasn't happened yet, once again, as I said, is because with the amount of content that there is within each chunk, no one is ever going to be able to roll enough chunks to the point where you would actually actualize this problem. However, because there are actually over 4,000 tiles in each map chunk, that means you're going to be rolling to unlock content more than 4,000 times over than you would compared to a one chunk account. And that means the problem that one chunk faces that has never materialized because no one has ever rolled 4,000 chunks because there aren't even 4,000 chunks in the game will materialize on an extreme tile account far before exiting the first map chunk. <sighs> Okay, that took a long time to explain, but we did it, we made it through, <laughs> except we haven't actually even said the way that this account will be rolling tiles. Thankfully, this part's really fast. Watchers of the first episode will remember, from any given point that we happen to be at, we are eligible to roll four tiles. We have a random number generator here, and it's as simple as this. One is north, two is east, three is south, and four is west. If, for example, we roll a two, which is the east tile, but we already have the east tile unlocked, we keep rolling until we get a tile that is not unlocked. A lot of people from last video suggested that instead of re-rolling, we should just unlock the next available eastern tile. However, if we were to do this, this would effectively yield us the exact same problem that happens with the traditional content rolling method. The method that we have concluded as being the best possible method here has been referred to as the snake method, which is somewhat accurate to start. However, there is some nuance that comes with this method, and once we get into it, you will see that the snaking does come kind of breakdown as well. And with that all out of the way, man, we can actually start this thing. So here we go. Get ready, because here it is. Episode 2. Oh my god, dude, there it is. The dwarf weed. That's the last thing on the drop table that we need. <laughs> we completed the man drop table. For the non-believers out there, here is the proof. And for those of you wondering why we even care about a dwarf weed drop, well, that is because it is our job as an extreme tile account to complete all content on every tile that we unlock, which includes getting every possible drop, as outlined in episode one. For more information on that, you should probably go watch that. All right, time to get back to the tile roller of four that is west. I really don't even have to do this, do I? Because like, no matter what happens, we're gonna just complete this room, right? So can't I just do this? Boom, boom, boom. This room is done. No other outcome is even possible. So I'll just double check. Search the books. Nothing of interest. I can't use this sink. Can't use the bed. Even if I put fire runes on it, nothing interesting happens. This room is complete. There's a table over here. I can't even put anything on this table. So this room is complete. Even though it says useful for putting things on, I can't even put anything on it. So I guess with that guys, yeah, let's go roll some more fucking tiles. <laughs> we made it all the way over here. Damn, this is so fucking exciting. Okay, let's go. Here we go. A three, that's gonna be south. Another three, another south. Okay, getting close to Bob's axes. A four is west, so reroll, two is east. Who is okay this is critical this is critical if we get south here then like we're gonna explore this whole area chances are we'll get the yew tree but if we don't get south if we get east or north we're gonna have to go all the way around the castle like fucking through the swamp in order to get in here this means no restless ghost until we do that which is uh, pretty restrictive i guess but also no yew tree so i got a two-thirds chance to not roll the south i think i think i just want to not roll the south but also north up there is the skill capes and then that's bad so i'm torn i don't know let's just let's just go for it man what do we get? A two? A two is east. Oh, oh my god, you guys. Okay, okay. See, like, look, here's another thing. If we don't roll east right here, which we don't, we rolled a one, so that's north. This little box right here is now completely inaccessible. I'm never going to be able to roll on it because, well, we're never going to roll from either of these positions ever again. So like, so like, yes, this is unfortunately one of the side effects of unlocking the game world in this fashion. And this is actually something that we encountered in the first part of this series as well. However, instead of being in the game world, it was during the Gravedigger random event. The only feasible conclusion is that when you unlock both the only entry and exit to 
an enclosed area, you must complete all of the content in that area, and if there is no content, then that area is simply unlocked. This isn't ideal that we have to deal with this, of course. However, in the grand scheme of things, it does seem like a pretty low cost when we consider the other side of it, which is the benefit that we get of being able to have an insured, versatile, multi-dimensional playthrough that would afford us with a brand new experience for every iteration of this game mode here on out into the future. And now back to the video. I'm just going to leave them blank, but we can all just know that I do indeed have these tiles. So with that said, I guess let's go ahead and roll some more tiles. Another one. All right, we can roll into the church here. Holy shit, this is amazing. Four, okay. We're not going in the church, I guess. And I guess now these tiles are all just like auto unlocked as well, right? We effectively have now, well, I think according to our rules, we should have effectively just unlocked this entire church, right? Because there's no other way we can get to it. We can't get to it from any other place. You only have these two doors are the only way in. And like this little section down here, which has a dead tree, which you can chop down. So we have effectively unlocked wood cutting once we get an ax. I don't know, this feels wrong. It feels wrong. I just like unlocked a whole big chunk like that, but there's really no other solution. I guess I am going to officially take my first steps into an auto unlocked territory. So I guess we have this whole building full of contents. There's a goblin in here. I guess we'll kill this. Bronze spear. Hey, there we go. <laughs> wonder if that's like better than this. Probably not. Holy shit. That's way better. Oh my god. What are the odds we just get a fucking massive upgrade on the first kill? I guess because it's two-handed. Whoa, I am happy we killed that goblin. Oh my god. Okay. I guess let's just talk to everyone in here and see if we can, there's any contents we need to complete. All right. Apparently prayer is useful. That's what the prayer tutor had to say. Father Eric, maybe we can, oh, we can start a quest. What, wait, what quest can we start? What is this? The restless ghost. We can start Start the restless ghost so i guess we will go ahead and do that wow okay our first ever quest damn probably not going to complete that for a long time if ever but who knows yeah i think uh let's see aside from that i mean we can play this piano it's not really like that important apparently we can't play the piano I guess we should just check out here super quick. There's some thistles, some plants, and this dead tree that we talked about. I guess there's two trees. So if we ever want to chop down two trees, we can now do that. All we need is an axe, and then we've effectively unlocked wood cutting. So that's actually pretty sick. I guess with that, let's head back on over to our tile here, and we will generate some more tiles. I guess I can talk to the Lumbridge Guide. I don't know if there's any content that I need to worry about with him. Yeah, I don't think he actually has anything for us. I think it might be a hard clue step. Yeah, for now, I guess we'll just go ahead and keep going. All right, this is officially as far north as we've ever gone. We got a four, so we go west. And now, yeah, we can only go north from here. So <laughs> are the skull cape guys in range yet? No, I can't even see them yet. So they're still over there. All right, a one. I really want to go over this bridge. That would be like, that's kind of absolutely critical, actually. So we really need to get east here. If we get east here, then that is really good. Please get a two. Okay, reroll. Three, get no okay fuck that's scary that is scary dude that's big scary i guess we can still go through the lumbridge castle and not have to contact these things maybe the lumbridge castle is the place to be that would be a bank that would be fucking sick i guess we can talk to the doomsayer let's see okay i can't even actually do any of this but i guess if we had any of these places unlocked already then we could just toggle the uh the warning messages but we can't do that so this guy officially has no content for us this is such a critical moment you guys so critical <laughs> i'm not even like exaggerating dude or holy shit we're really getting it to like the last aisle it's either north or south at this point what is it going to be anything just go south just go south east south holy fucking shit we built a wall. We built an impenetrable wall. We cannot access the Skill Cape Death area from this direction. We also can't really get to the desert unless we go all the way around, maybe like through the Skill Cape area. I, you know, I guess we could just, there's plenty of other ways to get to the desert. We can go around this bridge to here and, you know, just up around there. I don't need to tell you guys this, you already know. But holy shit, we are now basically destined. Yeah, we are forced into the castle at this point. So I guess, uh, let's see how we get there. All right, it is now determined that we will be going in there. I guess we just unlocked this area down here, clue step, uh, Hades Kazanus, and yeah. So the only place we can go is here. All right, so because we're on world 319, which is a target world, I guess we can trade Purdue. Uh, he doesn't have anything for us because you kind of need to complete quests, I think, before you can get anything from him, quests and diaries and stuff like that. So if he weren't on the target world, he would be in here, but I guess, I don't know, it's just like a small little oddity. Let's see if we can roll an east. I know that there's a pickaxe in this area. So if we can roll a two right here, that's east. 
Oh, four, okay. <laughs> so no, no, none of that yet. Our last chance. If we get north here, we're going in the front door. Most likely, and if we don't, then we're not. <laughs> oh no. Okay, we're gonna... Damn, this is gonna take forever to do anything else. Oh, but why did I decide to do this? Oh, apparently you can't walk on this tile. What the hell? What is... Why can you not walk on this tile? I guess that means the only tile we can roll from here is the east tile. Because we can't go north, west, or south. So, holy shit. Okay. I guess we just auto-unlocked the Lumbridge Towers, right? Alright. I guess we got a barrel. Stacked barrels. A chair. I know, in fact, there is a pickaxe spawn on the third floor here. So, I guess we'll just search this crate for good measure. Climb up. We literally just unlocked mining. Wow. That is pretty fucking sick. I guess we can drop this copper ore because I probably won't need that now at this point. Um, but yeah, that's cool, man. That's great. We unlocked mining. Okay. And <laughs> with that, let's uh, do some more tile rolls. Uh, really quick here. Something kind of important just happens and I don't realize it in the moment. I try to walk south because it appears that that is our only unlockable tile. And then when I remember that we can't walk there, what I end up doing is just walking west one tile and then rolling south from there. There is no reason for me to do that. We should never just be arbitrarily walking to a tile and then randomly deciding that this is the point at which we will start unlocking new tiles. That is a horrible, <laughs> horrible, horrible thing, which completely just destroys the integrity of the game mode. And so we are going to be initiating a new rule. If for some reason we have reached some sort of dead end, as we do here, where no new tiles can be rolled, what shall happen is that we shall retrace our steps back to the first point at which there is a new tile that can be rolled, which thankfully for us, in our case, just so happens to be the exact same tile that we committed our supposed mistake from. So it looks like we will not need to be restarting our account, at least uh, not yet. All right, there it is. We have officially initiated a skilling challenge. Chop down the oak tree. Obviously, we don't have an axe or we would do that using our woodcutting skill. We'd go chop down those normal and dead tree over there until we got 15 and we chop this. I guess that would also initiate a fire making and fletching challenge. We would need 15 fire making and 15 fletching, but obviously we don't have to do any of that. But yeah, that's sick, man. We have an oak tree that is going to be really great for like construction and, you know, just general woodcutting experience. It's a great thing to have. So let's uh, keep going. All right, there it is. We have now auto unlocked the entire castle at this point. There's no way for me to get there from rolling a tile. So this entire area is now unlocked. Wow. There has got to be some imp spawns in this place. I'll have to figure out where those imp spawns are. That's the first thing that comes to mind. We cannot move on from this tile here until we complete as much of the content in the Lumbridge Castle that we can. Whoa there, buddy. Why did you just go running in there? Why don't we go back and listen to the rules about auto unlocking? Because this does not seem right. In reference to auto unlocking an area via unlocking the only entry and exit points, we had said you must complete all of the content in that area. And if there is no content, then that area is simply unlocked. And what? That's always said? What if there is content in that area? What do we do then? Surely we don't just run around doing whatever we want. That doesn't make any sense. However, that is what we did in the video. So it appears as though we may have made a mistake. Series is over. Okay, bye. Okay, just kidding. But we really, really need to make a rule about what the continuation looks like if we auto unlock an area that has multiple pieces of content in it. There is like an obvious solution which makes complete sense and just fully retains the integrity and spirit of the game mode. And that is that we continue unlocking tiles sequentially as if the area was not unlocked. The reason for this is kind of obvious. If we can just use any of the new assets that we just acquired in the entire castle to make other challenges within the castle easier, then that is not within the spirit of the game mode. For example, the bank on the top floor would probably just make everything easier if we just forget about this for a second. And if we were to unlock the entire castle sequentially, we probably would not just unlock the bank first considering it's on the top floor. So we need to make an amend to the rules. Upon auto unlocking an area, in order to continue, all content must be completed within that area. If there is no content, the area is simply 
fully unlocked. However, if there is content, that content must be unlocked sequentially as if the area was not auto unlocked. So yeah, what ended up happening is that we kind of just explored all of the content in the castle, sort of just frenetically completing things as we saw fit. Naturally, I gravitated towards the second PVM challenge on the account, the imp drop table, which obviously breaks the rules that we have now set. However, thankfully for us yet again, there is no content within the castle walls that we can unlock that makes other content within the walls easier to complete. So while this is a kind of faux pas, it doesn't actually compromise the integrity of the account. While technically it does, emotionally it doesn't. Logically it does, but rationally it doesn't. So do with that information what you will if you want to leave and never come back no hard feelings however i myself am confident that with the new rules we have set in place the game mode itself remains intact and with that we will pick up where we left off killing this imp in the cook's kitchen some nice fiendish ashes that's pretty nice i didn't know they dropped that 10 prayer cool cadaver berries we can knock that off the drop list i'm just gonna max out my camera and see if i can catch a spawn area for one of these just so i can be absolutely certain that it's a pvm challenge yep i just saw him spawn right here we effectively initiated the imp collection log for lack of a better word i have no clue what these guys even drop i'm sure they have some rare drops i just know that they can be annoying to kill you might be thinking but loki what about the imp champion scroll that is a one in 5k drop that you have to get uh i was also thinking about that like right before i made this series and then i actually went to the wiki and i clicked on the imp champion scroll and then i read some words and the words say in order to be eligible to receive the scroll players must be on a member server and have 32 quest points so we don't have 32 quest points which means the imp does not actually drop the skull same thing with the goblins i don't have to worry about the goblin champion scroll until i get 32 quest points in which case i actually will have to worry about that kind of stuff so let's go explore the castle real quick shall we i think the first thing i really want to do is just come up here to the bank inventory is looking pretty cramped so we'll just throw all the herbs in there i guess may as well just like throw pretty much everything in there i'll keep the gp and the runes for whatever reason a crafting tutor i don't know oh that's scary i actually have no clue what's even in this castle this could be a fucking death sentence for all i know all right he just tells you about crafting and whatnot there's a chest you can't open it as far as i'm aware we do have a spinning wheel which is great that is a nice thing to have i guess we can start some quests <laughs> we, yeah we can start rune mysteries so there we go any other quests i don't i think this is probably dragon slayer so we can't start this one. Oh, lost tribe right right right. okay can't start that one either so yeah i guess i'll just do a little extra searching around in here maybe we'll find some content most likely not though we can interact with this bank booth by depositing something with it I don't want to miss any bases here. I know that there's some of you furiously typing in the comments that I like miss some tiny little thing. Hey, a bronze arrow spawn. We'll go ahead and pick that up. You can of course start Cook's Assistant. Let's go ahead and do that. Beautiful. Don't think there's anything in the basement either. There's some spiders we can kill. There's some leather boots. I guess that is a nice best in slot item. That actually is a best in slot item because these zombie boots don't give any stats, I'm pretty sure. We killed a spider. We picked up the cabbage. There is a bucket. Okay, a bucket. Ooh, knife. We literally just unlocked fletching. Oh my god. Nothing Nothing else in here. I guess we can search this crate. Search the sacks. Yeah, we completed the basement. And I think we actually just completed the whole castle. Um, here's a mine rune here. We'll pick that up. Mine rune spawn is great. That might be our only rune access for who knows how long. Maybe we should vote. We have to vote. We have to use the fucking poll booth. There's no voting currently. So we'll just review. This one looks good to me. Looks a-okay. Oh my god, we just killed an imp and we got a hammer. Um, <laughs> that means if we ever access an anvil that we just actually actually unlocked smithing so yeah that's pretty cool that is like our third or fourth imp kill i don't know how long this grind's gonna take but i just woke up for the day here so there's the imp spawning on the imp tile i'm just gonna kill him but he's gonna teleport away and this is gonna be a huge process if he teleports outside the wall like this i'm just going to have to hop worlds because i'm not allowed to go over there all right so this is the first time that this has ever happened the imp just dropped us bronze bolts since we've already gotten bronze bolts dropped from men we don't have to worry about drops like that uh i'm still gonna pick it up just because i don't know if i'm ever gonna need some bronze bolts but like we don't have to duplicate drops that we've already gotten from other monsters so looking at the drop table here there's also a cabbage so we don't have to get that because we got that from men that's 
pretty much just about it though. There's kind of a lot of stuff on this drop table. 16 defense. There is level 14 prayer. 16 attack. All right, there is our first full inventory of loots. Honestly, the imp loot table is fucking cracked, man. Look at this, we got raw chickens, we got meats, we got hammers, we got bread dough, we got balls of wool. That's like super useful for amulets, obviously. We even got clay. That's like a great thing to have. Pot of flour. That means we can actually complete like the first couple steps of cook's assistance. Of course, the beads, we got red and black. I guess I'll just uh, go ahead and deposit most of this stuff in here. All right, so I guess like because we now have a primary source of training fletching, that is gathering these logs, that initiates the skilling challenge of fletching. Since uh, I guess the highest level fletching requirement that we have here is level 10 fletching. In order to complete each of these tiles, we would have to get 10 fletching. And then we can create our first ever longbow unstrung. We don't have a way of getting flax or anything like that or bowstrings. If we did, we could actually unlock a range because then we could make our first short bow and start training some range with the bronze arrows we got from the men, but we don't. So we're just going to be getting 10 fletching for the sake of 10 fletching. All right, there is five fletching. I can now make short bows. I'm pretty sure these give like twice the XP as the air shafts. Oh, they give the same? What the heck? I guess I'll just keep making air shafts then. Air shafts all the way to level 10. All right, there is level 10 fletching. We can now make long bows. Skilling challenge complete. Level 17 defense. Hey, <laughs> the chef's hat. I've been waiting for that one. Best in slot fashion scape. That looks great on me. I fucking am loving that. Wow. Yeah, we still have about seven more items to go, but this is actually going way smoother than I thought it would. Uh, here's our log. Killed 47 imps so far. So nothing crazy, but we've gotten like a ton of items. So yeah, it should probably take like maybe another hour, maybe even less if we get lucky, but could easily go dry for a couple of 1 in 128 drops and that could make us stay here for like five more hours. So I guess we'll see what happens. There's level 15 prayer. You'll love to see it. We also got 17 attack, but I guess I'm at the point where I stopped covering every single level. So yeah. Hey, would you look at that? Another level. Also, like I've killed like a lot of these imps on this world without hopping and it's because... Oh shit, tinderbox. Okay, that's crazy. <laughs> um, But yeah, so like somehow when we just like spawn camp him, we hit him like five times, he never teleports. I mean, he does, but not very often. Whereas if like, I feel like if I'm walking around and I just find him and I hit him, there's like a way higher likelihood that he's going to teleport. So but yeah, anyway, we just got the tinderbox, which means we now have a primary way of training fire making. Uh, since we have those logs on the top floor of the castle here that means we're gonna have to go burn those when we get up there and if we had access to an axe and trees we would obviously have to burn those too but we don't so yeah fire making is now officially unlocked though hey there is level 16 prayer improved reflexes we can now one tick flick with the second tier of uh prayers all right another inventory of loot i probably don't need to keep hold of most of this stuff i'm just kind of doing it that's just a very small cost of insurance in case something goes wrong in the future We'll have like backup tinder boxes and stuff like that. Um, speaking of tinder box though, I guess I'll just go ahead and light up one of these logs so we can complete the skilling challenge for lighting the log. Ooh, that has a lot of XP. I'm just going to get a, a level real quick here just in case we get like a maze random or something. I'm pretty sure it rolls the loot based off your total level. So yeah, these are fucking crazy fast levels. I love fire making, at least in the beginning. It's just like so much dopamine. All right, I just went ahead and decided to get 10 fire making, 10 free levels, 10 free total levels. It's absolutely amazing. I think I'm also just going to go ahead and grab a couple of quick thieving levels because these should be pretty fast levels too. The men only hit us a one. Wow. Yeah, we could definitely get a couple of thieving levels here. There is level five thieving and all of these stalls are now unlocked. Pretty cool. All right. I think I'm going to get back to the imps here. Level five thieving is fine. Oh my God. There it is. The fucking potion drop. We just got the rarest drop from the imps. I don't think this thing actually ever does anything. It's like probably just a relic from RuneScape Classic or whatever before Herblor existed. I don't know. Maybe you can like give it to an NPC and he like gives you a something back or whatever but hell yeah dude that means all we need is the bucket of water and then we've completed the imp drop table current imps slain is 131 so we basically went just to right on drop rate for the potion drop oh yeah i'm so fucking excited we're gonna roll some new tiles man let's fucking go level 17 prayer beautiful 20 defense we can literally wear the best armor in the game full mithril as my 13 year old self would say mithril is indeed the highest tier armor in the game so we just beat the game essentially oh my god it just happened it just happened we got the bucket wait is that is that the one we dropped from before? I don't think so. I'm pretty sure that's the one. There's Fiona Shash's under it. This is really looking promising. 
Hey, there it is. Oh my god, I just got the shivers. Holy shit, we just completed the imp drop table. Oh my god. Oh my god. Okay, I'm just gonna quickly double check with the wiki. Oh my fucking god, we did it. Okay, oh my god. Okay, all right. So let's see. The last thing I'm pretty sure that we have to do is just go turn in a couple things to the chef for cook's assistance. We can't complete the quest because we don't have a bucket of milk, but let's see. What do we give him? Egg and pot of flour. I think that's all we can give him. Here you go, sir. That's all we can do. Yeah, I mean, unless I'm making some sort of obvious oversight, I believe we are done. Done. I believe we are done. So let's head on over to our tile, pull up the random number generator and fucking continue on the path of rolling some new tiles. So at this point, the only tile we can even roll is here. So here we fucking go. Well, we made it through another episode. I gotta say, reliving all of this footage that we recorded a couple years ago when I used to play this account really reminded me how much fun this all was. I would love for nothing more than for this game mode, and specifically this account for me, to be the new main progress series on the channel, but I don't know, for some reason, the pacing of everything just felt like kind of off. Not to mention the little bit of intellectual maneuvering we had to do to get our new tile rolling system off and running. I just have a suspicion that this video is not going to be received well. And you know, if that's the case, I just will accept that and that is fine. So I guess like any feedback you have would be greatly, greatly appreciated. Leave a comment, like or dislike the video. Just let me know what you guys think. Like I said in the beginning, having now finished the UIM series, which has been the main breadwinner of the channel for the last four years or so, I'm kind of just trying trying new things out here, and I'm just not really sure about this whole thing, so anyway, that's probably it for me. So yeah, guys, as always, thank you for watching. Stay safe out there. Take care. Until next time, I love you. Bye.